Whatever you do, it's revisionism, it's a deviation. No, it's deviation without the principle line. So, and it is true that capitalism, you know what's the problem with capitalism? One must admit this, that it has an incredible capacity to, to return from every catastrophe even stronger. Already Marx used for capitalism the metaphor of a vampire. I would rather say the living dead, you know. You kill him and then, you know, all those horror movies, oh, it comes to haunt you even stronger. It is true. Namely, look, for example, at the uh, Chinese great cultural revolution, a radical attempt to create new men if there ever was one. But now, now from, I, I don't support it, but what I'm saying is that now from our perspective, we can say that cultural revolution worked like shock therapy for capitalism in the sense of Naomi Klein. I cl cling to this. I claim that because the effect of cultural revolution was to destroy the past, the texture of traditions and so on and so on. And it created the void, which was then effectively filled with Deng Xiaoping's uh, 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 capitalist reforms and so on and so on. So is this my message? Precisely not. Don't be afraid, I am of, of, on your side. More than ever, we need communism. How? Let's look nonetheless at this defeat of the left. I'm sorry if I will be now a little bit limited to European perspective, that's my world. Uh, you know that recently we celebrated, if it was a cause of celebration, the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. But one should note something there. This is the first common sense observation. People didn't want what they got. I mean this in a very naive empirical sense. If you ask, let's take the most triumphal case, uh, Poland. If you ask the Polish workers in Solidarity Union, if you look, not if you ask, if you simply look their documents, what do they want? To put it in naive terms, they wanted some kind of a solidarity, a rough kind of justice. They wanted to live their lives outside state control, to come together and talk as they please. They wanted a life of simple honesty, sincerity, uh, the life without prevailing cynical hypocrisy, and so on and so on. As many intelligent observers noticed, what they wanted is, even in a paradoxical way, close to the official ideology itself, at least if we read it uh, literally. So then people were disappointed. How are we to read this disappointment? This disappointment is then expressed in very interesting ways. One is that so soon afterwards, in free election, successor of est communist powers came back to power. Second form of disappointment, the most interesting one for me, is a retreat to kind of a fundamentalist nationalism. It's a typical move of, of uh, deceived anti-communist. They claim that this is very popular to say in many East European countries now, that even the, that, that capitalism liberal, Western capitalism is basically no better than communism, that they are both the same side of the same decadence, we should return to our proud national traditions and so on. Maybe you remember the old anti-communist motto was better dead than red. I heard now a new right-wing motto, better red than eating hamburgers. Like, you know, that's the enemy. Or, as a right-wing friend explained to me, we share, we right-wingers, with communists the same principle, authoritarian organization of society, that's how they perceive it, but they claim, we, we are just opposed on how to do it, content. But they claim, with liberal capitalists, we share nothing, not even this. There the contradiction is absolute, as it were and so on. Let me not get lost here, let me just make the point how when the people were disappointed so with new capitalist freedom, how are we to interpret this? The predominant West European reaction is 
to treat it as a sign of immaturity. People were stupid, they expected too much, they thought capitalism is only freedom, consumation, as they ironically put it for East Germans, they thought they will get free pornography and bananas and so on. They had to learn that capitalism also means hard work, you can fail, responsibility and so on and so on. Now we have to gain maturity. Uh, it is, first one has to concede, it is that the European left had died twice. Not only in 89 the communist left, but also its twin social democratic left. It took a little bit longer, 20 years. But if you follow what goes on now in Western Europe, social democratic parties are, I claim, in a serious crisis, which is not simply the usual exchange. You know, in France they are practically disintegrating, in Germany, in Britain, in Italy, and so on. And uh, I claim that as to the dominant political mapping, a new antagonism is emerging. If in the old uh, West European scene, we usually had two big parties, apart from smaller parties, center-left and center-right, usually, I don't know, let's say conservative or Christian popular party and social democrats, so, and they, they, they exchange each other in power. Now a new duality is emerging, a kind of a centrist, pure capitalist liberal party, which is usually politically, sorry, uh, culturally tolerant, gay rights, whatever you want, abortion, and as the only reaction to it, reaction strong enough in electoral terms, uh, 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 nationalist uh, fundamentalists. It's, for example, it happens one after the other. The first shock was, you remember, how many years ago, 10 already, when, to the surprise of all, Le Pen emerged as the second for the second round of presidential elections in France. In many countries now, even in Netherlands, Holland, where they celebrate themselves, the most liberal open society, the nationalist uh, uh, anti-immigrant racist basically party is the second strongest. This is, I think, I cannot judge about you, but definitely in Western Europe and somewhere else also, I think, the greatest danger. We are approaching an era where, if I may paraphrase Sigmund Freud, who spoke about in German, unbehagen in der Kultur, discontent, uneasy, unease in civilization, uh, about uneasiness, discontent with liberal capitalism. The tragedy of the Western Europe is that, and not only of the Western Europe, is that the only po organized large political force which successfully gives voice to this discontent are fundamentalist, racist, nationalists. And it's an incredibly sad phenomenon. How, so again, how to break 